Hey everybody, Final Thoughts time for Steamopolis, and this is a game I've been waiting for for a long time, because it's from designer Gerhard Heck, and he made a big splash a few years ago with Kashgar, Merchants of the Silk Road, that was his first published game, and it was amazing, such a clever, fresh, original, and innovative take on engine building, and I mean, it just went from zero to hero. As soon as I played it for the first time, I was just blown away. And while Gerhard has done a few games between Kashgar and Steamopolis, they were kind of Kashgar adjacent. adjacent. They were kind of using the same mechanisms but applied to different themes. To me, this is his real sophomore effort. This is the first time he's really gone off and done something radically different than Kashgar. Although, like Kashgar, this is another really brilliant engine building game that is unlike anything else on the market. Really clever core idea. This melding and blending of worker placement and engine building. Uh, because, well, on your turn you are either pumping up your workers so they'll be able to do better worker placement spot actions out on the board, or sucking the power away from those workers to run them through the engine that you have been building throughout the course of the game, and then still use them as workers. This is really cool. And it's really nicely thematic, too. There's nothing abstract about this. I mean, it's I am hard-pressed when I play this with Jen not to make sounds as I, you know, open the pressure valves and let the steam flow and all that. And yeah, of course, yes, I had a whole bunch of pressure. That means I could use all that pressure to fly really high, but instead I'm going to let go of all that and pump that into my the turbines of my engine. Oh, and I've still got a little bit of steam left over, so that means I'm going to go over to, to this floor next. That is really cool. And um, it's creating a constantly updating and evolving puzzle because while the game always starts out fairly simple, you've only got a couple of of, uh, of these turbines that you can throw your steam into. And you have to decide, do you put them high, because you're going to go for high deliveries or low deliveries? The uh, uh, you know Over the course of the game, as you put more and more engine pieces in here, and you upgrade your oh your, your steam token so, so that um, your, your ship auto-pressurizes. Or, I didn't uh, talk about this, another upgrade you can do for your ship is increasing the minimum threshold. Uh, there's this little token, and as it moves up higher, that means that when you have to move off the board, you don't have to put your steam all the way back at the beginning of the gauge. You can put them up further on the gauge so that you're always more highly pressurized right from the get-go, which translates into more opportunities to run your engine and more opportunities for worker placement out on the board. This is awesome. I love this. Uh, you know, this is one of the coolest engines I have ever built in a game because of this really unique, fantastic melding of two very different um, play mechanisms into something that's, like I said, just unlike anything else on the market, and yet at once so immediately intuitive and and you know just tactile. I mean, you know, I mean, I love an engine game where I actually physically feel like I'm running the engine because I move pieces through it. I mean, you've seen uh, over the last couple of years like a couple of uh, assembly line conveyor belt style games that have come out, and this is kind of adjacent to that, but in a very, very different way. Love that a lot. But you know, that's just half of the game. The other half of the game is this worker placement uh, game where you're trying to you know get first dibs on all the factories you need to go. Although you don't necessarily have to use those factories, you could instead visit the markets to upgrade your engine even more. And two different ways to upgrade. Either giving you more machines that you can build or um, uh, you know locking in more and more points. And the more stuff that gets bought from a market, the more expensive subsequent things get. But not surprisingly, the more powerful they get too because this is a stacked market. All the weakest tokens are in the first column and then the, they get stronger and stronger. Uh, but you start having to pay more and more money to install these better things either as a banner or... Uh, and it's interesting. I didn't actually in the run-through install a banner, but the cost for installing banners, unlike engines, which is usually about you know paying cogs or what have you, the cost for installing banners is you have to lose these steam tokens. And then all of a sudden, because what, what it... Thematically, again, everything makes sense thematically, 
what's happening is the banners that you are putting on your ships they create drag you know they're they're wonderful they're you know they 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 you know they they light the sky up and they make the citizens of Steamopolis really respect you which is why you get victory points out on them but they create drag on your ship to have these gigantic sails that don't help you at all which is why you actually lose your steam tokens but there are places factories you can visit in the city to get more steam tokens and build them back up so you can have a very interesting ebb and flow that you go for early stuff your ship gets weaker you have to build it back up but you know that's in the uh you know the the name of chasing points or do you say to heck with that i'm not going to worry about points i'm just going to build an ultimate engine but then by then the game is almost over because other players are just trying to empty out the markets as fast as possible and then you've got to decide well um can I run this engine now that I've built? Can I run it enough times? Do I have enough upgrades so that I can run it to p full efficiency as opposed to only running the lower half of it and not the top half of it? This is all really neat stuff. So it's a cool worker placement game because every worker has three uses. It has the space you put it on, or alternatively, the market. And in addition to those two choices, there is also the location based on where the uh, the upper and lower class citizens are, because there's this pick up and deliver element as well. And it's not pick up and deliver in the standard way. It just means that there are targets on the board that are more attractive, and those targets are changing because wherever that, um, if you are going to visit the city, and you're going to have to do that, it's kind of part and parcel of the game. It is a worker place game after all you want to go to the places where these are pick them up and then move because hey if you could do an action and score extra points for delivering passengers along the way why wouldn't you do that or get extra steam so you can power up your engine to be able to do bigger and better stuff all of this stuff dovetails very nicely together i'm a big fan of all of it i have one problem with this game which i uh, was not so much of an issue with cash car it's interesting uh, you know, this game has a lot of literal moving parts. You know, as you build up your engine and move all your, you know, your steam tokens through it, and you know, claim spaces on the board, move the the passengers around, and all that. But um, so you know, there's a lot to juggle. But what you actually get in terms of upgrades for your engines, by and large aren't very exciting. There's just a few minor tweaks on a few basic things. They are get resources or get more points whenever you deliver, um, oh, what do you call it, uh, passengers, which is what that icon is, or get more storage, which is a big issue because you can very quickly run out of space on your ship, and this game is pretty unforgiving about that. Um, or, well, like I said, you know, turn them into banners. The, at the highest end, the last end, which is when the game is getting close to end, a few cool, well, I mean, not always cool. I mean, this one is just get two points. That's not particularly interesting. But some of the top end ones do actually interesting offshoots stuff that it, and, and I would have liked to see more of that. Every passenger in this game, if their upper class is going to give you a point, if their lower class is going to give you three steam, I would love to see these passengers give you different variable bonuses for delivering them. I would love to see more alternate engine pieces rather than just get more resources that I can pump into my other engine pieces so I can do more stuff. Um, and while the game does come, to be fair, it comes with a lot of cool starters and five unique, even there, the variety isn't quite as much as I would like. And, you know, I go back and I compare it to Kashgar, which, gosh, I'm trying to remember, I think that game had like five or six different resources, then there were like a bunch of different contracts on display, and there were a lot more cards that allowed you to manipulate your engine. Here, you build your engine, and then, um, but you manipulate your workers to leverage that engine, i.e. the steam tokens. You don't really, the engine itself, though, doesn't really do a lot of manipulation of the board. You know how in a lot of board game manuals, there's always that line that said, if you ever come across a card that seems to break the rules, the main rules, the card takes uh, priority. This game doesn't need that because none of these cards really change the core rules of the game and introduce you to, oh, wow, my ship totally breaks the rules of Steamopolis and can do these other things. Um, and that is kind of a missed opportunity. And that, I think, is the 
only thing that is keeping Steamopolis out of one of the best games of the year, as far as I'm concerned, because everything else is crackerjack. This is still a fun game, but I would have to say at this point, I'm going to have to give it a 7 out of 10 instead of an 8 out of 10 or a high 8, which is what it would have been, if there were just more variety in the things that my engine can do. The engine building is great. The engine running is great. The engine results are just standard. There's nothing really special. And I hope Steamopolis gets some more expansion content. Really, all I need is just some more either passengers and or engines that do more interesting, far out, funky stuff. Uh, that's um, and, and, and without that, this kind of feels like, oh, I'm playing the introductory version of Steamopolis right now. And wait until you introduce all these cool modules that turn on. That's what the game is missing a little bit of for me. Don't get me wrong. Jen and I have very much enjoyed the game. Uh, because I cannot stress enough just how cool and satisfying it is to you know build all the way up and then run through and you know, trigger three or four modules of your engine in a row. Even if all they're doing is generating resources that the other one gobbles up to convert points or to get you, uh, you know, an extra little thing here or there, uh, that still feels great. I'm just saying what keeps this game from achieving true greatness. Um, you know, Kashgar, ha you know, the engines you built there were a lot more interesting. The interesting thing about that game is you built three engines at once and you had to kind of synchronize them. Here you're building one engine, although you're trying to synchronize it with worker place that is just as brilliant, but the engine itself just needs a little bit more juice to make it into the upper echelons of games. That said, my fingers are crossed that um, you know Gerhard Heck and the publisher, was it Corax Games, are not done with this. I have read somewhere that they are working on cooperative rules for this game, and now if they come up with that, yowza! Sign me up. I am very, very excited about that. Uh, and if that means they're working on expansion content, then I'm assuming we're going to see more cool stuff. Stuff other than just manipulating galas and sponsors. Oh, by the way, I didn't mention how sponsors work. If you have a sponsor on your ship, basically, they are a one resource discount. And, um, you know, either... Uh, gears or crystals. After you use them, you flip them to the other side. So next turn, they are discounting the other thing. That's a cool idea. Um, but that feels like kind of an idea that I would expect to be one of several little I individual elements that can be added to make things different. Here, it's just a core part of the game. This is how sponsors work, and players can manipulate them if they got certain powers, uh, you know, off of engines and whatnot, or, you know, their starting powers. That's cool. I like that, but that's just the tip of the iceberg of what this game could be. So, I have high hopes for Steamopolis' future, because the bones here, the basics here, are lovely. The presentation is great. I love this sense of verticality of this crazy board um, that just like reaches to the sky. I can barely reach the victory point markers all the way up there. Uh, and uh, yeah, I look forward to being able to build more interesting and unique engines and run them by uh, spending all my steam in Steamopolis. And that's the final thoughts, folks. Thanks very much for watching. Have a very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Uh, bye bye